Hey guys, nice to see you. So my name's Sam and welcome to my channel. So today what we're going to talk about is your wedding in terms of the coronavirus. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, I'm a bride and my wedding had a get postponed from June 27th of this year, uh, 2020, to June 26th of the following year, so June uh, 2021. So that just gives you a little bit of idea on where I stand on this and where my perspectives are coming from. So uh, what I want to start off with is if you have to postpone your wedding, or if you have to cancel your wedding, or if you just did not have the planning process that you thought was going to happen or any of those things it doesn't matter but if it didn't go the way that you envisioned it sucks we're allowed to be upset we're allowed to grieve uh, even though so many people out there say oh but good thing you're not dealing with X or you're not dealing with Y well yeah but I'm still dealing with this and this still sucks so um, absolutely feel free to come to this page, vent to me. Um, I even have a couple of WhatsApp groups going with a few different bride groups. So if you want to get joined in on that, let me know. I don't mind joining you in. Type in the comments and I absolutely will let you join in on that. Um, just for us to vent, just bride to bride again. So with that being said, um, even though I didn't have to postpone my wedding, I did officially get married. Now I know some people are debating on should they get married now and then have the reception later or should they simply just postpone everything to later now i'm going to share my perspective if that doesn't work for you guys then absolutely scratch that and then go with whatever you believe is right fit for you and your fiance uh, but we did get married uh the reason is is a couple different things well one, it definitely helped with finances for us. Um, we run like different companies together and we kind of work together hand in hand on a lot of different things. So finances, that was definitely helpful. Um, in addition to that, also just knowing that we are uh, a unit, just it's something magical. It's something really special. So uh, for us, just being married, just being able to call him my husband, uh, just was something really special. Uh, it meant something to us. So uh, that's why we went ahead with it. As well as if something were to go wrong in this time, uh, God forbid anything went wrong, I would be able to speak for him. So for example, let's say he had to go to the hospital due to this virus, or I did, or something happened to me. Um, at least we know that we have the reassurance that we are legally married. Uh, later down the line, we're going to have that party, but at least we're legally married. So um, we feel a little bit more secure with that. So those are a couple of things that we thought about. Now, on the contrary, on the flip side, we thought, well, is that going to take away from our special day down the line? Uh, and I truly thought that it was. I was like, if I'm marrying you, if we're having this day together, then I feel like it's going to take away from down the line. We're already married. I already call you my husband. So me walking down the aisle, me doing that first look, I feel like it's not going to have as great of, a, of an impact. And that's what I originally thought. However, it seems like that's not actually the case. Believe it or not, even though we had the quick little courthouse wedding, um, my fiance and I, we tried to not make it into a big deal because I didn't want it to ruin that special moment later. So we literally went, I had yoga pants, just a sweatshirt on, um, and we got married. It was honestly so magical that day. It was so amazing. We went to dinner, we just had it. We got this done a little bit prior to the coronavirus actually. So we were luckily able to, you know, have a nice dinner, do that together. But even just doing a Zoom thing or just signing the papers and not even doing a ceremony, just having that done uh, was something that was meaningful and so special to us. And still to this day, I feel like I'm not really, like, you know, ha have him as my husband. He I feel like he's still my fiance. I still call him my fiance um, until we have our special day in June. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of where we stand on this. Um, but I highly, highly suggest to go ahead, get married now in whatever capacity it might be, and then down the line, go ahead and actually do your wedding day. So with that being said, we rescheduled for a year out, but I know a lot of people are postponing just for a couple months out. Now that is perfectly okay too. However, keep in mind, as you're discussing this with your vendors, uh, be mindful that if you postpone an entire year out, you might have additional fees to pay. 
Now, with just inflation and all those different things, the cost of business actually goes up each year. So they have to, in order to stay in business, they have to raise their prices. So if you want to postpone to next year, they might require an additional fee. Um, so make sure that you communicate that with them when you book for the following year. Now, with that being said, if you don't want to postpone another year, maybe you have to accrue those fees and you don't want to do that, then what I suggest is planning for something this year. Now, with that being said, with doing it this year, you may not be able to get a Saturday or a Sunday or a Friday or whatever weekend day that you're looking for. So some people are hesitant because they don't want to have a Thursday wedding. They don't want people leaving early. They don't want this. There's so many different things on why they think that a Thursday wedding won't be great. However, keep in mind, it's going to become the new norm. There are so many weddings this year that are getting rescheduled, that are getting postponed. So there is going to be a plethora of weddings Monday through Thursday. You're not going to be the only one. So with that being said, that might give you a little bit of additional comfort that you're probably not the only wedding that they're going to on a Thursday. It's going to become the new norm. Uh, I think Thursday weddings, Monday weddings, um, it's going to give you something to actually look forward to on a weekday. Going to make the week go by super, super fast. So I wouldn't worry about that. The people that want to be there are going to be there on your special day. And whether it is a Monday at noon or a Saturday evening, no matter what, they're going to be there. Um, it's just to spend that special time with you and your now husband at that point, once you guys get married. Uh, so just make sure to not worry about it. Uh, it may be stressful in the time where you envision that you have the Saturday wedding at that 4 PM typical time, but it doesn't have to be, and it's still going to be absolutely amazing. And on the day, you're not even going to realize that it's a Thursday. Uh, you're going to be spending so much time, um, just planning and enjoying that it's not even going to probably phase you on the actual day. So with that being said, don't worry about a non-weekend wedding. If you need to postpone your wedding, how do you even go about it? Because you have so many different vendors and not everyone might be available on that given day. So how do you go about it? Well, what I suggest is sending all of your vendors a message and just simply say, and I'll actually, um, you know, post it down below so you guys could see exactly what I said to my vendors. But I basically just asked them, hey, I'm not sure as of now if we're postponing, but if we are, I'm thinking about postponing to this day. I was wondering if you have that day available. If not, what are other days that you do have available? Something as simple as that. Um, now, Keep in mind though, if you ask about postponing to this year, next year, um, whatever day you're looking to postpone, you may have the ultimatum of switching right there and then, or they won't hold the date. Now that is kind of a extreme case, but a lot of times what the vendors will do is they'll say, yes, I will reserve this second date for you. But if someone else calls and they want that date, then you need to make your decision right there and then. Now, again, that may seem harsh because you might say, well, what if I don't know at that moment if I need to switch? But keep in mind from a business perspective. Now, from a business perspective, right now, um, they're losing a lot of money. They don't, uh, they might not be able to give refunds. They might not be able to do this because simply like, let's say you're a photographer, right? You're not able to shoot any shoots right now. So if that's your sole source of income, Right now, you are technically unemployed. You don't have a job. So keep in mind that when you're going through this, they're having a tough time as well. Um, so just try and be mindful of that. But with that being said, what they might do with like the venue or the date that you're trying to switch it to, they might say that the moment someone calls and says, hey, I want that date, we'll give you a call. You'll still have first dibs, but you will need to decide right there and then. Now, even though, again, that might sound harsh, but keep in mind from that business perspective, if let's say you hold this date and you hold that date, you're holding two dates and you end up having it on that first date and they shoot someone away from that second date, 
then they might have lost that business and now you have it on the first date and now that second date is open. So even though they told someone else like, oh no, that date is taken, now maybe that date actually meant something really important to that person. So then they said, oh, I'm not gonna go to this venue then, I'm gonna go ahead and go to this other venue. Now that other venue just lost business. So really, really keep that in mind that even though these policies might seem harsh in this time, um, they're not doing it to be mean or not doing it to be cruel to you. Um, they're just doing it to look out for their business too, because keep in mind, if they don't look out for their business, the date that you rescheduled to is not going to happen because they can go out of business as well. So just keep that in mind. We're all in this together. We want to work together with this. Um, and by we're all in it, I mean bride to bride ride to vendor, um, the venues, the photographer, the DJ, um, all of those different facilities, we're all in this together. Um, so definitely just be mindful of that. Um, now, once you guys decide that maybe you do want to postpone, or you do want to cancel or something like that, now how do you let your guests know? Now, if you've already sent out invitations, that's a little bit harder because you'll actually have to send out a second round. Now, that second round of invitations could be as simple as just a e-invite. I use this website called Greetings Island. I think it's absolutely perfect for, uh, I use it for most of the events that I do, so birthdays or um, you know parties, and it gives an e-invite, and that e-invite you can actually RSVP to. So I definitely suggest doing an e-invite if you've already sent out your invites and you don't want to go through the process of printing it again and going through all of those steps again. Um, now, in addition to that, you could also post it if you have a wedding website. You could go ahead and post it on that. Um, even just posting it on Facebook, that's something, a great way to get your message out or even Instagram if you guys use that. Um, but either or is definitely a perfect solution. Now, if you did not send your invites and you just sent your save the dates, then there's a completely different way of going about it. If you just sent your save the dates, then you could either send another save the date, or what I did is I did the lazy approach. I didn't send another save the date. I simply just posted on Facebook. I had two different kind of images that I made. I posted them both on Facebook, and I just made a message to everyone saying, hey, we postponed our wedding a year out. Now I already sent save the dates. However, on that save the date, was simply just telling the date that it was happening. It did not say the venue, it did not say the time. So by not sending a second save the date, I'm not worried that like people are gonna accidentally show up on the day if they didn't get the memo that it's been postponed. Um, maybe what they'll do is they'll just reach out and be like, hey, I didn't get an invite yet. Or maybe they'll just wonder and be like, oh, maybe my invite got you know lost and just like keep quiet. But no one's gonna show up on that day because no one actually knows where or when it's happening. So what I did is I just posted on Facebook. I know some of my family and friends didn't have Facebook, so I just asked my mother-in-law, my mother, as well as my bridesmaids. I'm fortunate enough to have a very large bridal party. I have about a dozen brides, so, or sorry, a dozen uh, bridesmaids. So I just asked them to um, kind of spread the word. So pretty much it seems like everyone already knows that our wedding is going to be postponed. Uh, so I didn't need to worry about resending a save the date. Later down the line, once it comes closer to the actual wedding, then I'm going to send our actual invites since we didn't already do that. Um, and then that's how I'm going to go about it. Now, if you didn't send save the dates or you didn't say anything, well, then you don't need to tell anyone that it was postponed. You could just go ahead and save, you know, su submit your save the dates when that time comes. Now, if some people think that you are going to have it on a certain day, just a simple text message or even just posting it again, wedding website, posting it on Facebook, sending out an email or a text, that even works too. Um, really, there's so many different ways that you could go about letting your guests know and no option is the correct option or no option is the wrong option. Uh, there's really no etiquette for this because this is something that never really has happened before. Um, there hasn't, I mean, obviously in a way in the past there's been pandemics, but right now this is something that, this is a once in a lifetime thing that we're gonna experience. So, um, so there's not uh, like a protocol to this or a certain etiquette or way of going about it. So don't worry about being uh, like politically correct or, you know, ma making it the right way. Now, again, if you've already ordered your save the dates, I know that there's a lot of companies that are giving discounts for like resave the dates or change the dates. So I highly, highly suggest that you either 
A, look online for a coupon for that company that you're looking for, or also just contacting the company and asking them if they have any like promotions or discounts, um, because that could definitely uh, help help you out if you're trying to send a, you know, change the dates or resave the dates or um, even a cancellation. Now, with that being said, when you're contacting all of your friends, family, and you're contacting your vendors, venues too, uh, and vendors as well, uh, it's super important do not say that your wedding's canceled unless it's actually canceled. Um, everyone's very upset in this time, and if they hear that your wedding is canceled, it's, uh, it's a very sad thing. That means it's not happening again. But if you see that it's postponed or rescheduled, then that's so much better. It gives people still hope, it makes them still excited that you're gonna have the wedding, and it doesn't give them that moment of severe sadness, which a lot of people are going through right now. So it may sound super extreme, just that one word difference, but it really does mean a lot. Same with to your vendors. If you're emailing them, don't say your wedding is canceled unless it actually is canceled. Use the word um, postponed or rescheduled, because if a vendor gets the email saying, hey, my wedding is canceled, that could be a huge downer for them. Uh, then they got to email back and say, oh, like, you know, I'm sorry, your wedding's canceled. And then you tell them that it's actually rescheduled to another day. Now they might have got upset because that is income that maybe they need to survive during this time or things like that. So just kind of a side note, I know that went on a tangent there, but just make sure that you guys uh, do that. I think that's something that your friends, family, and vendors would also appreciate. Um, All right, so now with that being said, now that we've kind of talked about how to go about it, uh, when you go about it, like what would everything that you do when you go about postponing your wedding, even though it's hard, let's try and think of the positives. Even though if you have to postpone three months out or four months out or even a year out, well, that's more money to save. Maybe there's something that you really wanted. Maybe you wanted that extra, you know, cookie table or you wanted a photo booth, but you didn't think that you would be able to afford it that, you know, during that first wedding. Well, now you have an entire year or a couple months to then plan for that wedding uh, that you're having then. So I think on the bright side there, you might be able to add a couple bonus features to your wedding. Um, in addition to that, even just saving up for your honeymoon or maybe just doing something more elaborate to make your day that much special, um, that could be a huge pro, um, you know, in this, uh, in this time. Also, more time to plan. So if you're like me, if you enjoy planning, now if you don't enjoy planning, just think about this, you're done. So now you have a year to just enjoy the engagement without even having to do anything. So even if you're already done with the majority of your stuff, still take this time to just relax and enjoy being engaged. Uh, that could also be a time. Or enjoy getting married and having two days to celebrate. One day now and then one day later. Um, so keep that in mind, still try and stay positive on absolutely everything. I know that it's hard, but again, remember, we're in this together. We wanna to be helpful to one another. So if you do wanna reach out to me, I'm happy to talk to any of you brides, uh, just to kind of vent, uh, or just uh, tell you what I did, give you some suggestions. But again, I'm a very like uh, organized person. I kind of have all my ducks in a row for that. So uh, if you have any questions or anything that you want me to help you research or anything like that, probably done the research already, so I don't mind helping you guys out for that. So with that being said, I know it's a sucky time. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be upset. But just keep in mind, in the end, you found the person you want to marry. And that is the most important thing. Additionally, you have friends, you have family, you have other brides around you that are here to support you, to here to help you. So just keep that in mind when you're going through this hard time. Uh, just try to keep a smile on the face. You found the guy that you want to be with or the woman that you want to be with. And that's an amazing thing. So keep that in mind. And with that note, we'll wrap up there. But hopefully you guys have a great wedding in the future. And I'd love to see pictures and love to hear more about it. All right. Bye, guys.